One of the most oftenly asked questions that I see newer to Linux users ask, especially as they grow as a Linux user and they become a little more knowledgeable about the command line, about terminal applications, they start wondering why they really need to use terminal applications rather than GUI applications, graphical applications. Why, for example, would you rather use a terminal for your file management stuff, you know, to search through directories and move things, copy things, delete things. Why would you want to do that at the terminal rather than just using a graphical file manager? And of course, that's just one example. You, you could practically do everything that you do on a computer at the command line inside a terminal if you so choose. But why would you want to do that? Well, there are many cases where it's advantageous to actually use the terminal rather than a graphical GUI application. I'm going to discuss a little of the reasons why and, and why we have kind of this divide where it seems like newer to Linux users really resist the terminal, right? They don't want anything to do with it. It's strange. It's foreign. It's alien. Uh, I, I don't, I can't handle it, right? Don't, don't show me a terminal <laughs> where once you get more intermediate to advanced users, they often spend most or even all of their time in the terminal at the command line. And sometimes it seems like they're just doing this to be elitist, to feel superior, right? <laughs> but that's not actually the case. There are actually real reasons why the more you learn about Linux, the more time you're going to spend in a terminal. And the reason I'm making this video is because I think nobody has really answered this question properly. It's kind of like the Emacs videos I do. You know, I've, I've made a lot of Emacs content in the last couple of years because I think Emacs is a fantastic program. It has real world advantages for those that want to take advantage of something like Emacs. But the problem is, most people don't explain the advantages of Emacs properly. They don't break it down. They don't do, a, you know, Eli 5, you know, explain it like I'm five years old kind of thing. When people talk about Emacs, they often talk way above people's heads. And that's often the case with this kind of argument, too. Why use a terminal rather than a GUI application is usually when, you know, the more advanced users start talking about things they can do with the terminal and the command line, it just goes way over people's heads. So today, I, I just feel like I have, I have a style of presenting stuff to people where I can really break it down and, and bring it down to, to your level, especially if you're a newer to Linux user. So that's what I'm going to do today. The first thing I want to talk about is command line interface tools versus GUI applications. So if I switch over to my desktop, let's talk about file management since I brought it up. Let me open a terminal and let's say that I want to ls, you know, get a listing of everything in my home directory, which we're currently in by default. The terminal will open up in your user's home directory. If I want to cd into a different directory, I could cd into the downloads directory, do a ls there to see what is in my downloads directory. I could cd back into the home directory. I could cd into slash etsy if I needed to go into slash etsy for some reason. I could do a ls there. If I wanted to take a look at one of these config files, maybe I wanted to take a look at my sddm.conf, sd DDM is my login manager. You know, I could change some stuff here. And then once I'm done, you know, I could quit out of the, uh, the editor here. I open this with Vim here in this case. If I wanted to copy this file, I could copy the sddm.conf over to, I don't know, I, I mean, I guess I could put it in home slash downloads. And now if I CD into home slash downloads, do a ls, I should have sddm.conf somewhere there. And I do. So I can move around, look in directories, copies, files, edit files, move files, delete files, and all of that was rather easy, right? That didn't look like I was struggling and really navigating the file system. That was rather fast and pippy, right? Now, I've done this a lot, right? It's one of those things you get used to it, but I can move around pretty fast. Now, if I had my graphical file manager open, so let me open PCMan FM, which is my GUI file manager. I mean, I could navigate with the mouse. I could grab the, the bar here and then take a look at everything. And then what did I CD into? I CD'd into downloads. I could take a look at that if I wanted to. I could go to the field up here and slash Etsy. I wanted to take a look at that and then I could find that same file that I wanted to edit the uh, sddm.conf at right click open with whatever editor I want to open it with maybe I want to open it with vim again like I did before make the changes quit out of it I mean I, I can do all of the same tasks but here's the thing the graphical application 
is essentially a front end to the command line. For example, when I type, you know, slash home, well, slash home, slash DT here, you know, all of that, all that is doing is it's running a command line uh, command. It's running CD slash home slash DT, exactly like I did in the terminal. This is just a graphical way of doing that, right? When I click on this downloads folder here, all I'm doing when I click that is in the background, it's actually running CD slash home slash downloads. That's, that's all that's doing. If I click on the home folder, CD into the home folder. If I move a file around, right? If I just grab a file, you know, maybe I want to grab my bash RC or something, you know, I could do a control C to copy. I can go back into downloads, control V to paste. There's that bash RC. All that did was that was a, uh, a copy command at the command line, CP, the copy command, copy home slash dot bash RC over to download slash dot bash RC, you know, the same commands. Many people think, especially newer to Linux users, people that don't do a lot of scripting or programming, they imagine that GUI applications are completely different than command line applications. That's actually not the case. All the GUI application is, is they're a representation of the command line tools. So the buttons and sliders and widgets and the folders and the images, anything that you click on and there's some kind of action associated with that, that action is actually running a command line tool, right? It's actually doing a copy, a move, a remove. You know, it's, it's when you open up your graphical update manager, you know, your software center and you do an update and you click update, right? The button that says update your system, right? All of this that's doing is if you're on Ubuntu, it's doing a sudo apt uh, update and and sudo apt upgrade. You know, the same as you would do at the command line. It's just it has a button you click to run that same command. But in the background, it's actually running the actual command. And now that I've told you that, you know, these GUI applications are essentially front ends to various commands at the command line, right? Then naturally you have more command line tools available for you than GUI tools, right? The GUI applications are very limited because they can't possibly graphically represent everything that is possible at the command line. It's just impossible, right? It's just way too deep and complicated where the command line, you have literally every single command at your disposal, right? Because the command line can run every single command that's available on your system where a GUI application, obviously it can't do that. For example, we just saw me playing around with file management in the terminal and with my GUI file manager, PC man FM, but there were some things I could do at the command line. I mean, let me uh, zoom in here. For example, the GUI, it lists your files. If I can spell LS correctly, uh, if I wanted to sort them in a certain way, I mean, I could do a sort here. I could also uh, shuffle around the various files. I can grab a random file. I could do a lot of really cool stuff. And certainly the more advanced stuff like grip said, awk is not going to be available. For example, maybe, you know, if I do something like a, let's cat slash Etsy slash pass WD, right? So this is a file on my system that lists all the users on my system. Uh, and their home directories, what groups they belong to, and their user ID, yada, yada, yada. Well, you know, with the command line, the world is my oyster. Any command that I want to run, I can manipulate this data in any way I see fit where you, I just simply can't do that with a, a GUI tool because it's not going to include every single command and every single flag for those commands built into it. It, it would just be way too complicated. You can't really build a GUI tool that way right where the command line is designed to give you ultimate power if you will so you know i could pipe this through awk and i could do uh, something like this where i awk and i specify that the colon is the field separator because in this particular file colons separate every single field and i want to print the first and third fields in this case and there you go and it looks like the first field is the name of the user and the third field is the id and of course we don't have any kind of space or anything between that i probably should have specified a sp specified uh, adding a space between that but that is how that works if i wanted the last field i could do dollar sign nf for the uh, last field and you can see there is that I've done plenty of videos in the past on command line applications like a grip, sed, awk, cut, very, very powerful tools that allow you to do anything you want to do 
with data that's on your system. So certainly the number one reason why intermediate to advanced users prefer the command line usually over graphical applications is because you can do anything you want at the command line where graphical applications, just the nature of them, they're limiting. They kind of have to be limited, right? That They can't offer you everything. Now, there are other reasons why you might prefer using the command line and the terminal rather than graphical applications. One obvious reason is you don't always have a graphical application available for what you want to do. Sometimes you want to do really complicated stuff. I want to go find every file that meets this certain criteria on my system and I want to check it and see if it contains this particular string of text and if it does I want to replace that string of text with another string of text and then I want to take all those files and order them in a specific sort of sorting and then I want to take all those files maybe uh, move them maybe to a remote server somewhere copy them out you know, I could do something really really complicated right at the command line that there's just no way you could possibly do with the GUI what I was just describing you know that very complicated sequence of events that I wanted to do at the command line there's there's not a GUI tool that could do that for me right I'd have to go to the command line to do that so many times learning the command line really is a necessity. At some point, you have to learn the command line because there are going to be things that you can't do in a GUI. Also, sometimes a GUI is not available for you. What if you're working on a, a server, a server that doesn't have a graphical desktop installed? It doesn't have Xorg or Wayland, doesn't have any kind of desktop environment, right? Especially when you SSH into remote servers, right? When you SSH into a remote server, all you get is a command prompt, right? And it's basically like opening up a terminal, except the terminal you're looking at is the remote machines command line. And that's all you get. If you know all the command line tools, you're good. You can do anything on that machine you want to do. If all you ever did was play with GUI applications, you will be completely lost when you have to remote into another machine. And I know a lot of people don't have to work with servers. I'm one of those people. I don't really play with servers that often. I mean, I have a few web servers that I play around with, but it's not like I work in IT or system administration or anything. And many of you guys probably don't even host your own websites or anything. You don't even have any web servers. So you're like, well, I'm just a Linux desktop user. So I'm always going to have a GUI available. No, no, no. <laughs> Trust me. Things go wrong, right? Updates will break your system occasionally. Sometimes you will have a situation where you do an update and you reboot your machine and Xorg crashes. There was a bad update, bad dri video driver, whatever, and you can't actually get to a graphical environment, right? All you can do is get to a command prompt, right? You can get to the TTY in this case, so, you know, your console, your virtual terminal on your Linux machine. And if you know the commands, you're good, right? If you've, if you've spent some time at the command line, like I have, I can navigate anywhere on my system. I can find a config file to edit if that's the problem, or I can update my system, or I can downgrade a package, whatever, because I do all of that stuff anyway on a daily basis in the terminal. I update my system through the terminal. I always use Pac-Man, you know, the standard command line tools for Arch to update the system. I never use the graphical tools. So if I have a situation where I reboot my machine after an update and XOR crashes, I'm still good because I can still go to the TTY and I can still do everything I want to do, you know, and then hopefully once I correct the problem, reboot and then get back into my graphical environment that was broken. But it's one of those things, if you didn't learn the command line tools first, then you're in for some headaches, right? Because now you have to start doing some Googling, right? <laughs> or reading a wiki, or maybe reading Stack Overflow to figure out the command line tools that you need to actually correct the problem, where if you'd have just learned them in the first place, you're already good. Speaking of Stack Overflow and support forms, anytime you ask help or support kinds of questions on the internet about your Linux machine, almost always the answer, the solution for your problem is going to be given as a command line, right? That's going to be given as a terminal command for you to open a terminal and enter this command to fix your problem. They're never going to give you instructions on how to use a GUI. They're never going to tell you, open this graphical program, go through this menu system, pick this in the menu, then, you know, this screen has got some tabs, click on this particular tab, and then you should see all these buttons. Click on the button that says this. You know, they're not going to go through all that trouble. That's confusing as hell. And who's to say you even have that graphical program installed on your system? or that particular desktop environment. You know, everybody has different graphical programs installed on their system. But you know the one thing every single Linux user has installed on their system? 
the command line. <laughs> they have the shell. Usually the bash shell is like the standard de facto shell on Linux. And if you know bash, you can do anything. So 999 times out of a thousand, when you ask a helper support question on the internet, it's going to be given to you the solution as a terminal command. So just get used to that. And it makes sense, you know, because everybody can enter these terminal commands and it will work universally across the board. Now, are there advantages to a GUI over the command line? I'm not going to say that the command line is always the right tool. There are some situations where the GUI could be preferred. For example, graphical applications are often a little easier if you're doing multitasking. Like I've got a lot of different tasks that I want to work on at the same time. Well, with GUI applications, I can open several different programs, several different windows, right, and arrange them on the screen. If I'm using a tiling window manager, or even if they're floating, they can be stacked on top of each other and I can cycle through them and quickly do a lot of different stuff, right, with GUI applications, where at the command line, that's a little trickier. Multitasking, you can multitask at the command line. You can you have several different virtual consoles available, your all of your TTYs, for example. And of course, you could install a multiplexer like Tmux that will kind of turn your terminal into like a tiling window manager and like a self-contained tiling window manager inside the terminal. But it's still a little clunkier, multitasking is in the command line rather than the GUI. Now, there are some very tangible benefits to using the command line over the GUI if speed is an issue for you. For example, file management stuff. You saw how easy it is for me to just to open a terminal, navigate around, do everything I want to do, copying files, editing files, moving files at the command line. I'm always going to choose that option over a GUI application just because of speed. Once you know the commands, you know how these commands work, they're, they are always faster than the graphical applications. So if speed is important to you, then learning some of these command line tools should also be important to you because it will just speed up your workflow. The other thing that is a real tangible benefit to using a terminal and using the command line is uh, terminal applications are typically less resource intensive. They, they don't use a lot of resources where a GUI application naturally is going to be a little heavier, right? It's going to use a little bit more CPU, a little bit more RAM than the terminal application would. Another big reason why you want to start learning some of these command line tools is eventually as you become a more intermediate to uh, more advanced Linux user, you're going to want to do some scripting, right? You're going to start getting into more advanced stuff that you want to do on your system. And that's going to require you to start learning a little shell scripting, maybe a little programming. And, you know, once you get into this, you have to learn some of these basic command line system tools. You can't really learn scripting without learning the command line. There are graphical applications that can kind of help you learn some basic programming. You know, there's these WYSIWYG programs. WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. These WYSIWYG applications that'll let you build a program without actually doing it the the normal way, which is opening a text editor and actually writing the program yourself. But those, I don't like WYSIWYG programs because they really, they hold you back, right? You really need to learn the actual syntax of the programming language that you're working in, in this case, bash scripting, for example, you need to learn some of the system tools, the command line tools. So I, I would never suggest anyone to use a, a WYSIWYG application to learn any kind of scripting or programming. Ultimately, I, th I think what it comes down to, if like if I'm going to break it down, the real difference between command line programs and GUI programs is the command line gives you ultimate control of your system. You can literally do anything at the command line because every single command that is available to you on your Linux system is available at the command line. Now, because it gives you ultimate control of your system, the command line is not user friendly, right? Because anything that is so overly complex, but it, I mean, it's powerful, but it's complicated, right? <laughs> because you can do anything at the command line that naturally makes it complicated. So the command lines, it's not user friendly, right? The GUI is user friendly, right? The GUI is much more user friendly, but it's the reverse. With that user friendliness, you're very limited on options and features, functionality, because your GUI apps, they can never be what the command line is, right? They're just kind of a, they're a user friendly way to do some of the most common tasks on your computer. But once you get beyond common tasks, 
you're, you will often find that GUI applications are not available for you and you have to open a terminal and do some command line stuff. And that really is the difference. You know, new users will always hate the terminal because they don't know the commands. I mean, how can they like something if they don't actually know how to use it, right? That's why a new user, you know, you can't fault them for not liking the terminal and wanting GUI applications for everything. And the same thing with more advanced users. You can't fault them for often naturally gravitating to a terminal because they will know more commands. They, they It's got more features, you know, they, they can just do more. So you can't really fault somebody like me, because I often hear from people, well, you do too much at the command line, you do too much with terminal applications, you can't open a GUI application to show this stuff. I could, but that's just not the way I normally would work. Even off camera, I don't work that way. I'm, I'm always opening a terminal. And many advanced users are doing that. I, again, I just think that's the natural progression of things. When you don't know the terminal, you're gonna hate it. Once you know the terminal, you're gonna spend all of your time there. One other advantage of the command line over GUI applications is the command line never changes. I mean, it changes, but you know, once you learn the system tools, the command line interface tools, once you learn the bash shell, you know it. It's never going to radically change on you where you have to completely relearn, you know, things like grip and sed and all and cut and all, all the, the system tools you will use on a daily basis at that point. You've got it. You've learned it. You will always have it. It'll work on any Unix-like operating system that you ever work on. The GUI is completely different. GUIs change all the time. And there's hundreds of different GUIs, hundreds of different desktop environments, for example. All of them, very diverse, very different. You can't just move from one to the other and know how to use them, right? And then they drastically change. One version of KDE Plasma will be drastically different than the next. And same thing with GNOME. GNOME 2 and GNOME 3, completely different desktop environments. Don't even look the same. Don't function, feel the same. Uh, where once you learn ter the terminal, the terminal is always the same. So you never have to worry about waking up one day and relearning everything that you used to know. Now, I know I've been rambling on a little too long here. Really, I just hope I broke this down in simple terms that are easy to understand. I hope that these two opposing sides, the new user and the more advanced user, they kind of understand each other a little better now. The new user, of course, he hates the terminal. He has no choice but to hate the terminal. He doesn't know how to use it, right? And the more advanced users, of course, they love the terminal and the command line because once you learn those tools, you can do so much with them, right? They're so much better than the GUI applications. So that's why we have these two opposing sides they seem like polar opposites within the community you know the noobs and the more power users if you will but they're really they're really not polar opposites really all the new user is he's an advanced user just waiting to happen now before i go i want to thank a few special people i want to thank the producers of the show devin dustin gabe james maxim matt michael mitchell paul scott west alan armor dragon chuck commander angry diokai dylan george lee linux ninja marstrom mike Harry, Jan, alexander peace of archimador polytech reality for less red Prophet, steven and willie these guys they're my highest tiered patrons over on patreon without these guys this episode would not have been possible the show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen all these names you're seeing on the screen right now these are all my supporters over on patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux, free and open source software, and the terminal, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Even if you're a GUI virgin, one day you'll be a terminal chad.